Well, time to take a look at what's grabbing the headlines here in uh, French papers. Uh, Florence Villemont, Villeminot uh, joined me now. Flo, we're focusing on uh, Labour Minister François Rebsemann, who is uh, set to present a new reform at the Cabinet meeting today. That's right. This is a reform on social dialogue, so a, a reform aimed at modernising and simplifying the uh, relations between unions and their employers. It might sound really boring, <laughs> but it's actually very important. It's on the front page of Les Echo, the business paper today, uh, that focuses on what is actually going to change. What is the reform going to change in terms of labor laws? Well, the main thing that you should uh, take from this is that it's trying to simplify the uh, institutions that actually represent workers in the workplace. Currently, there's a very complicated web of representatives, and this reform aims to simplify that. All right, well, papers across the political uh, spectrum, are some of them are quite critical of uh, this reform, it's starting with uh, the business paper, Le Echo. Absolutely, Le Echo, in its uh, editorial, says that the, the minister is really trying to build this as a major reform, but you can see here in the title there, it says, actually, this is a tiny reform. Uh, the government had promised to overhaul the French uh, labor laws, which are very complicated. Uh, the government held some very tense talks between union representatives and business uh, representatives. And Lizico says all this for this reform, uh, basically what the government is trying to do is please both parties, both business owners and worker unions, giving guarantees to both sides. And because of this, the government has produced a law, according to Lizico, which is impossible to understand. It's a confusing catch-all terms reform that actually isn't really simplifying things. Well, there's been analysis uh, shared by the right-wing paper Le Figaro. That's right. Le Figaro uh, says that this reform is really far from the government's original intentions. And you can see the, the front page here. It says that the government has actually given up trying to reform the labor market. And yet, that's what France desperately needs, according to Le Figaro. It needs a major reform of its very rigid labor market, uh, which is handicapping the economy, according to Le Figaro. In its editorial, it also takes a closer look at this reform. It doesn't have anyth anything nice to say about it, I must say. You can see the, the headline there. It says, much ado about nothing. Uh, it says that this is an unnecessarily complicated, empty reform that's just a bunch of hot air. Well, you know things are bad when the communist paper agrees with Le Figaro. That's right. Le Figaro, uh, the L'Humanité, rather, the communist paper, also says this is a terrible reform, but for different reasons mm. than uh, Le Figaro. Uh, it says that basically this reform doesn't go far enough to actually protect workers. And you can see here they're saying, are we really talking about a social dialogue here? This reform actually goes against workers uh, and their representatives. And inside, uh, L'Humanité really lashes out against the government, saying the socialists are showing their total disregard for a social democracy. And basically, once again, they're eating into the hands of business owners. All right, well, moving on to another story. Uh, the fate of migrants still very much dominating French papers. That's right. French papers are still trying to figure out what's the best way for European countries to deal with the crisis. How can we stop desperate men and women trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea, mi risking their lives? Well, Libération is a very interesting front page today. It argues in favor of legalizing immigration. Now, basically, according to Libération, it's a very interesting argument. It says that European countries should sell temporary working and residence permits to migrants who ask for them. And this is the editorial of Libération that argues in favor of this, saying that after all, these migrants are paying colossal sums of money to uh, human traffic, or it's basically money that could be used here in Europe. All right, Flo, meanwhile, the uh, Christian paper La Croix focusing on uh, air quality right here in France. That's right. Now, if you've spent any time in Paris in March, you might remember that it was very smoggy, very polluted. Well, the government has been putting in place a series of measures to fight pollution here in Paris, across France, and, uh, well, starting to bear its fruit, according to La Croix. Uh, now, these measures tackle especially pollution coming from factories, and because of this, pollution has slightly gone down in recent years. But you can see here, La Croix says, basically, the hard work still lies ahead for improving air quality. Basically, the government has to tackle pollution that's coming from heating housing and, uh, and agriculture. Right, well, speaking of uh, pollution, a message we're hearing across the world, especially today on Earth Day. That's right. Today is April 22nd. It's uh, Earth Day. Uh, and I pulled out an article in Le Point which actually mocks the hype around Earth Day. Now, Earth Day uh, was created on April 22nd, uh, 1970, by an American senator, uh, Gaylord Nelson. And this was created to raise awareness about the environment. But you can see Le Point saying, basically, this is just a day you have to get through. Uh, and it's 45 years of existence. Earth Day hasn't been able to avoid the environment 
environmental catastrophe that we're in. Uh, and sure, Google has a cool, cool doodle. We'll be hearing all sorts of speeches about how important it is to save the Earth. But according to Le Point, the ugly truth is that the Earth is worse and worse and worse. The ice caps are melting. Uh, oceans are being depleted. Rhinoceroses are almost extinct. Very depressing picture painted in uh, Le Point, which uh, says, sure, we'll think about the environment today, and tomorrow we'll think about books, because after all, tomorrow, April 23rd, is World Book Day. And then in November, we'll think about toilets, because there's, that's when there's International Toilet Day. All right, Flo. Well, on that note, uh, that's the end of uh, the papers. Thanks very much for keeping us up to date.